Hello and welcome to Mastermind. Our mission is to build profitable businesses so that we can have financial freedom, time for our families to make an impact in our communities. Let's kick it off with some big wins. Isaac, lead the way. Sounds good. My team is killing it. I, a couple weeks ago, delegated training my new guys to my lead and he did fantastic. And thanks to Jesus tipping me off to the ABCDE method, he's been starting the day setting the goal for the day and like they'd go through like a minute long maybe two minute long stretch and just all collect together and it's creating just really good camaraderie right in the beginning of the day and man they're just killing it they're knocking out a twenty thousand dollar job right now they've only been on for a week and they're about to get it knocked out and mm -hmm. yeah i've i haven't been on the job side besides touching base with them and bringing them coffee and yeah, just popping by here and there for three weeks, maybe even more now. Yeah, so, so cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. very pleased. That's really cool, Isaac. And, and it's fun to hear. And some of my fellow Gen Xers might chime in here, how the uh, younger generations, how they connect and you, you hear, what is it? What are here? 20, Jesus is smiling big, right? 20 minute stretch. We're like, what? And like our generation, like the boomers would have stomped us if we stretched you know, before we got Oh to no, I, 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 I said one to two minute, not 20 minute. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We would, we could have gotten a yawn in and maybe one stretch. And after that, yeah. then they would have stomped us and said, good work. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No. Very true. Yeah. But we cultivate culture. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> good work. Good work. That's it. They're all big wins. Yeah. So we're still working on a couple big jobs and jobs in between. The pumpkin job, which is that big historical theater we're working on, it was a sixty-four thousand dollars job. It's jumped up to about sixty, about another few thousand. But we we got our third phase done. So we got twenty-six or seven thousand coming on that job for that phase. And we got that done like a week and a half ago, giving them an invoice because we jumped over. And working on the really big house, <clears throat> the other sixty-four thousand dollar exterior, and she's given us a bunch of extras, and uh, so it's been pretty sweet how we've been uh, just getting getting a lot of jobs done. Um, I met with a customer last week on a job I looked at for a customer I looked at <clears throat> about thirteen years ago. They had mm. me look at the outside of their house, and I knew they were tight wads, and that's a bad word. I shouldn't say that word, but they were really tight. <laughs> They were just really stingy with their money and that's okay. They're good people. Anyways, I, I pulled in there yesterday. I'm like, I know this house and they didn't remember me. And I went and they had some different stuff to look at and they had me look at some. They didn't start stuff. complaining about the last painter, did they? Yeah, no, they did it themselves <laughs> actually. <laughs> oh, okay. It was a $6,900 interior job, but it was some patch. And I added a few hundred bucks because there might be some yeah. things. Got the job. They had me look at the outside too. And they still want go. me to the outside yet, but they're like 70. <laughs> so I'm believing that once I, once I get in there and we give them our confidence and their culture and they see everything, they're going to have mm -hmm. us to the outside too. So that was pretty cool. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> so you did get a second chance to make a first impression. Yes, I did. Cause they didn't, this, even after reminding them where they walked up to my other job or they showed where they came up and introduced themselves to me 14 years ago or whatever, they did not remember at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Very good. Thank you, Daryl. Rich, big wins. Oh, I guess my phone is ringing again. It's ringing more. We did about $8,000 in sales last week, and I still have three more to look at. That's pretty big for me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Especially halfway through the month. Fantastic. Yeah, so that's All the big right. win. big wins for this week. That's awesome, Rich. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Craig. One interesting thing that I got to do this week is for my rotary, I got a couple of checks for charities. And so I was able to drop those off with and get, get a picture with, with the big rotary check. So that was really fun. Sweet. It was a charity in not too far from me that has special needs facilities like wheelchair basketball and, and just fitness, et cetera, et cetera. So people that have mobility mm. issues can, can get out and stay active. And so I got a whole tour of the facility. It was amazing. That was cool. Very cool. So that, Thank that, you. Was, that was big win. And, and they might have some work for us if we put together a paint it forward. So they might have a submission for us. 
Oh, cool. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I ha we had a look around and was like, yeah, this might be an applicable mm -hmm. area for a paint it forward. Yeah. There you go. Fantastic. Yeah. Hey, Seuss. Yes. Yeah, so good morning. So mine has to be cutting off distractions. And what I mean by yes. that is um, I noticed that I've been a slave to Facebook lately. And it reminded me of the post that Chris posted on the MG, uh, the book, The One Thing. So that I went back to my, my takeaways and he said, from the one thing until your one thing is done, everything else is a distraction. So I, I noticed lately that I've been really distracted, just checking it like every, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. I don't know why. So it just became a bad habit. So I, then I catch myself just looking through random videos like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I just deleted it off my phone and I just made a decision to make it a jam session in the afternoons. Just go in there and post what I have to post, comment, do whatever I have to do. But that's more personal. And I feel like I need to focus on more because I don't have that privilege to be distracted right now. But that was my <laughs> big one. It that is, is awesome. Thing. Yeah. And I don't know that it benefits anybody privileged or not to sit there and scroll these videos for time on end. Yeah. yeah. So that's awesome. I'll let you know that like I found myself scrolling too much and too often, even in the evening, I use phone throughout the day. Cause I'm chatting with you guys or commenting or whatever it might be. And then I find that I continue using and scrolling. So I've decided to, when I'm done with my meetings for the day, I put the phone down and sometimes I'll just go put it in, on the charger in the master bathroom and just leave it alone, leave it there, not in my pocket anymore, where it usually hangs all the time just to break that uh, cycle as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you. You're not the only one. Good job. Sure. All right. Florian. I guess it's me. I'm the last person. Okay. So, uh, so you're the best for last. Yeah. <laughs> so big wins for me is like I was uh, driving yesterday to one of the communities. I had a lot of houses down and walking on the street, which I had two houses finished like two years ago. And one of the clients was walking mm -hmm. his dog. So I stopped and just talked to him a little bit. By the way, it's okay. Oh, we're thinking about you meet in May. So we have some touch-ups around the house, but I have another two of my friends that want to paint their house. So it was a good start, which is, I was not always, but I'm ready to send because I know when the clients leave now, the snowboards. So I have to send the cards, how it goes. Mm -hmm. But that came right in my way. So we talk like for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. We talk about family life and everything like that. So it's great. Yeah. So the other thing is I've been talking to you, Steve, in the past two weeks, that interior the exterior job for 72K. So I closed yesterday mm -hmm. to see how many hours and everything. So pretty much I have 360 hours for exterior and 510 for interior. And it brings me to 58% of total. Okay. So that was a very big win for me. And the funny part of that project is because it did exterior in one spot. So one of the, my mm. guys, they didn't have a lot of things to do interior, they go exterior. And I was so organized this time, like I got a lift with my guys. 40 feet high, the house is very strange with a very strange pit on the roof. Very excited. And the other thing is because I went for vacation, a small vacation for four days in Amsterdam. And my foreman texted me this Monday and said, hey, the house is 90%, 99% down. It's just like a few touch-ups. So when I came on Tuesday, I put my guys one more time and said, hey, go around the house, check everything, make sure everything is perfect. So I got out. I'm booked on the late May 6th, like four projects going on right now. And today I have another client from BNI actually was referred. So he have two exterior houses to paint. So I'm going to do the estimate today and I feel confident I'm going to get that. So it looks like it's a rental <laughs> house because it's an investment now. Mm -hmm. So I have to work around the price now. You know how we go there and say, hey, is that a rental? Or you own that house. So that's the main mm -hmm. question. So we'll see how it goes about the pricing. If the guy wants to do blow and go, and we'll see how we work about the numbers. But I feel confident. Mm. That's my big win. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like we've got momentum. Big Mo is in effect. 58% gross profit. Woo! Yeah, 50, yeah, very happy. Yes. Very happy about it. Way to go. That's awesome. Fantastic, Florian. Thank you. So glad to hear that. All right, Isaac, what is the one thing we can brainstorm for you to help you to double your business faster? Yeah. So 
I've been working through what's the most efficient use of my time and I'm plugging through my to-do list that we've got going. And one thing that I've been wondering about, is it legal for me to read throughout the day or is that delegated to a morning or evening thing? Because I want to start plugging through books, but for some reason sitting down mm -hmm. and, and reading, I'm like, is this allowed? Should I be putting together a newsletter or something else? <laughs> what do you mm -hmm. guys think? Yeah, good question. Yeah, no, it's not legal to read all day. <laughs> and really, our brain can only take in so much at a time that it needs to process it. So at some point, it becomes a drudgery, and then it just grinding it out to get through it, and you're not really taking it in because we can really only take in so much, process it, and then apply it. I would not advise it all day, but an hour is great. If you got the time, an hour is great. And you want to be careful, too, in this position that we don't spend too much time researching, that we spend the majority of our time, eighty at least 80% of it, active in, in networking and sales and privacy canvassing. Very important. And I know that we'll try to find any and everything else we can do so that we don't have to get out there in Courtesy Canvas if we don't have a networking meeting to go to or a sales appointment. But Courtesy Canvassing is where it's at. It builds character and grit. And the funny thing is, every time I went out there, I didn't want to. I had a friend who's like, hey, can you get out there yet? I'm like, no. He's like, come on. I'm like, all right. And it was hot. So I know how hard it is. And I had a backpack and it was a July and August. And I did. And then it was in the afternoon. Like, why'd you go in the afternoon? And I said, because it took me that long to get myself to get out there and I was drinking coffee and I'm a sweater. So I was just like Niagara Falls. Yeah. No exaggeration. Those who didn't tell me to get off their lawn, I would sometimes hand me a paper towel or ask me if I had a like of water because I was sweating so bad, but I kept going. And the funny thing that happened, Isaac, because every time I went out there, the phone would ring after I'd be out for an hour, like not right away. I'd be out for an hour, hour and a half. The phone would ring from somebody else I'd provided an estimate to saying, Hey, we'd like to go move forward with you. Oh, it it's weird how it happened, but there was a correlation, right? Because I tracked the data. And so I'm like, oh man, I need some work. All right. I've got X open estimates out there. And I don't recall if this is when I scheduled the follow-up phone calls yet or not, but let's just assume I didn't. And I was waiting for them. And I was going through all the self-talk of, should I follow up with them? They don't like me. They went with somebody with a cheaper price, but I caught onto the correlation. I'm like, all right, if I just go out and knock on some doors for an hour and a half, one of them is going to call. Sure enough. Yeah. It's the weirdest correlation, but it's the harder I work, the more fortunate I become. So if you've got time, it's great to read, but here's what you do. Listen to audiobooks while you're out there knocking on doors. Ooh, now you're reading for eight hours and generating leads. Yeah. Now, in all fairness, when I was out there, I was listening to Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar, he was talking to me door to door. He was, he's the best. He is the best door to door motivational coach. And we need all the motivation we can get when we're out there knocking on those doors. Yeah. But it develops grit and character. It just takes your self-will, your resolve to the next level. And that's why I highly recommend it. Okay. Cool. You knock on a thousand doors, you can do anything. Yeah. Jesus, he's knocked on a thousand doors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has. He's not scared. He'll get it. Thanks, Any dude. other thoughts for Isaac? Guys. No, I think that's good. Just like Steve was saying, you, that that the book can become your new Facebook too, when there's things that need to be done. But I think if you've got if you've got good organization and you got your one things done, you're mm -hmm. in that hour reading. Mm -hmm. I want to spend some more time reading. I've been pretty good on the Facebook thing. I haven't been chugging along on it, so I can spend more time doing other things. But reading is something I want to step up a little bit on. My biggest mm -hmm. for me is actual in a book reading. It's my biggest weakness, which is my own fault because I don't take the time to sit down, but my mind wanders. But when I'm driving my truck, it's so easy to listen to an audiobook, but you can't write things down either. So I got to listen to that book twice. Yeah. So, so Zig says, according to research, everything he shared was backed up. And he says he backs it up spiritually, physically, mentally. According to research, you have to listen to a book 19 times to retain what you do from reading it once. Mm -hmm. yeah. I won't mention Daryl's name, but they'll throw these books at me. <laughs> oh, I was like, this one and that one. I'm like, and for me, I, I'm here, right? So I'm not driving around. So I have to like read it. He's going through them 10 times faster than I am. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize it. And I was like, wait, wait, he's driving around listening on Audible. Different, very different. This is, you know, I'm still on chapter three and you're on 12th book. <laughs> yeah, right on. Daryl, mm -hmm. how about you? I'll expand on something I've been working on. 
I started three weeks ago, but I haven't been working full weeks the last couple of weeks. And that's a, a Mm-hmm. daily audit. And so I wrote down some notes on what I was doing. And so what I do, 15 minute intervals from the time I get up till the time I go to bed. And so I wanted to find out where I'm wasting some time. So the first day I did this, and I'm just hoping this might help somebody. Um, This is great. so at 845 to 915, I went over to show Lewis a patch job that he, that I needed him to work on. So that was 30 minutes of my time, which isn't a big deal, but I went back at the end of the day and I looked at why I had to go and help him get started on a job when I have a tech stack that could do that for me. And he was having some hiccups on monday.com. And so he wasn't able to open up the app. And so anyways, I had to go over there and help him. Not a big deal at all. It's 30 minutes. After that, it was from 915 to 945. I went to Walmart to get some notebooks so I could write down all my different tasks I'm doing on different things. That was an hour of my one day just on that. And I was like, my wife went to Walmart the day before and I didn't have all my notes on my daily tasks. I need to get notebooks. I need to get notebooks. I could have had my wife get them the day before. So just looking at my daily log, I had a full hour of my day that was wasted just on, on meaningful tasks, getting notebooks. I need that to keep all my notes together. And I went to go show a guy a job. I need to do that. No, you don't. That's what money.com is for. And so the next day I spent an hour and a half at my job with my guys, had everybody there. We called the help desk at money.com. I got everybody set up and I haven't had to do it. Since then, that was two weeks ago. I haven't had to, I, I fixed that was a one hour every few days of a gap that I have now. So I'm doing a daily audit and it's every 15 minutes. So I woke up at 4.50 that morning. I ran my 5K from 4.50 to 6 a.m. That was the 5K I ran. I had the whole day. And so doing that for two weeks, it's not an everyday thing, but I want to do it for two solid weeks because Jesus, you were talking Facebook and you've only got 15 minutes. You have to account for every 15 minutes to your day. So if you Facebooked and checked email, you've got to put Facebook and email. And then if you see Facebook on there nine times throughout your day, you know where your hangups is. So I don't know if anybody is doing that, but if you're not, I think it's a really good idea because it's helping me. That is I'm going to do fantastic. that. Yeah. Yeah, that is It's awesome, an eye bro. opener. It's when you read the Bible and you look at things you're not supposed to be doing and you're like, whoa, I'm doing that. It's when I look at my daily audit, when it's written down, I was, and I've been doing this for a long time, just business. And I was like, wow. And I highlighted the things that I can delegate or not do at all. And so there was two things there. It was one hour and just one day. So it's really cool. This is awesome, Daryl. This is uh, an exercise that I usually have one-to-one clients go through when they say, oh, too much going on. I feel overwhelmed. I want to hire an admin assistant or office manager or project manager. And I'll say, okay, wait, hold on. Let's go through this exercise, right? And track your time throughout the day for three days. And it's self-revealing, right? As to what's going on and where and what can be simplified, what can be grouped together, what can be deleted and what can be deferred, Yeah. right? So that's awesome, Daryl. Yeah. Very cool. It's, it's And there very cool. are um, the worksheets out there. You can pull them up like uh, calendars, 15 minute increments and print them out. I recommend doing it on paper. Yeah. I think that's what Daryl's doing. Yeah. I'm doing it on, do paper. it on paper. That way something's an hour and 15 minutes for that one task. I don't do, I don't do every 15 minutes. If it's six to seven 30 or seven 45, I just put 6 a.m. to mm-hmm. seven 45. This is the task I did. It's just, you don't want to leave a 15 minute interval open on your mm-hmm. calendar. That's awesome. And then maybe if it's convenient, take a little snapshot of section of time just to show the guys. Yeah, I will see an example. Yeah. I might do today's and, and so it's nicer written. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's great. Fantastic, Daryl. Thank you for sharing. Rich, what's your one thing, my friend? Thing is posted. The customer didn't want my helper at work the other Mm. day. That's, it's still killing me. I did Mm. sit down and empty the jug per se yeah. and went through she was there throughout the day so we chit chatted as well but we had to sit down and they, they weren't upset with my reaction which made me feel good but that was just a horrible reaction for me and that's i should have never even sent that but anyway i worked through that we're going to be working for them in the future 
I asked them if, if they met my helper, would that make them feel more comfortable? And she said, possibly. What had happened is they've been broke into numerous times or at least three times. So they're very, mm. they don't want other people. They know me. I've been working for them for 10 years. Yeah. Um, so I understand. But on the other part, it made me feel bewittled. Like I'm going to be bringing somebody into their house that's going to do them harm, and which is not obviously not the case. But yeah. I don't know what to do. The next few jobs, we're going to need two people, maybe three. I don't know what to do. They don't want... They don't want anybody else but me stuck. The same. So it's the next two, three jobs are for the same customers? Yes. Not right yeah. away, but we're going to be working there this summer, at least two more times. Mm -hmm. Do you have other projects that you could put them on? I, I didn't hear you, Steve. Could you, so do you have other projects you could put them on and or could we book out our summer and, and let, they give them an ultimatum? Say, listen, they, they come with me or, or we can't do it. Well, that's what I said to her. I said, she said she would talk to her husband. I said, but really, I said, there's, it's, I, I have to have help. We have to move mm -hmm. a lot of furniture. We have to do this. We have to do that. She threw in saying that they could help move the furniture and stuff, but I just. Mm, I yeah. Don't. So I would encourage you to find better customers. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's not that they're bad people, but they don't fit your three P's, right? The process it might be nice people, might be profitable projects, but the process is not there for you. Yeah. It's not worth the stress. Yeah. Or They're, your team, what are you gonna, we can't lay them off for a week or two or three right. in these intervals. It's not fair to them either. Yeah. Now, worst case scenario, if we do not have any other work, we, we then we do it. But I would encourage you, rather than focus on them or how to get these people there, your team there, which sounds like it's just going to be a difficult battle to instead double down on selling more work, other work. Yeah. And then once you book out enough other work, just let them know, say, listen, we've got tons of other work. We'd love to do this job for you, but I can't do it by myself. So it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to have to be it. it. Just, it hurts because they're borderline friends. We're as close as you can get. Keeping the business and pleasure thing separated. Sat down, had lunch with them. I've, I've heard about her mother. I've heard this, it's just a close working relationship. And just, I just blew my mind the other day that they were like that, but. She's a socialite for lack of a term. So she's into the gardening club and the, the peanut yeah. club. And she's just, she's a good customer that way because she just spreads my name everywhere. Not so. true for me. No, nope. yeah. hold on. Let me help here. Not true. Because when she spreads your name, she's going to say, but get just rich. When you hire them, only use rich. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was thinking that yesterday. I, it's tough. So I know bad news travels faster than good news too. So I don't know. I don't know. So. Okay. So here's a story real quick. I got a story for you. There was a really nice home. Guy called me out back in Venice, Florida. <laughs> and to come out and look at his dock, he had a hundred and it was, yeah, I think it was a hundred, around a hundred feet, linear feet, a hundred foot dock that went out into the bay, which went out to the Gulf. Big dock. And uh, it needed restained. This wasn't really in our three Ps, but I was thinking about the process wasn't there. Uh, wasn't something we wanted to do, or, or, but he was in the neighborhood that was our three piece. And we, so I was thinking about doing it, consider I was entertaining it for the sake of working our way into the neighborhood to do painting all the homes. But my tail just kept wagging with this guy. I just, I didn't get a warm feeling from him and it wasn't blatant or obvious, but just my, my, my gut was just wasn't right with this guy. And I just man, didn't. So I sent him an email. So I trusted it. I sent him an email. I said, thank you. So-and-so really appreciate you having us out. Unfortunately, for your project, our first availability isn't for such and such or whatever it might have been. Because I didn't present it on the spot. I didn't feel right about it. I, I went back to the office and just decided no. And fired that email off. And he replied back with nothing but explicitives. You blank. Blah, blah, blah. And then here's what he said. He said, I'm going to tell all my friends about you. Fantastic. <laughs> please, please do. I will pay for the stamps, the phone calls, because birds of a feather flock together, right? Yeah. And so the good news is she'll tell her friends. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Cause I didn't want his friends calling me either. That's a good way to look at it too. I know you have these feelings about the situation. You have to one, take ownership of your feelings. Your feelings are just action indicators. Okay. They're saying you need to take action on this. And the action I would encourage you to take is just Find other business, find more business, find other business that fits your three P's. Awesome people, 
profitable and a great process where your whole team can come and help you. That sounds ideal. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm going to have to do, really. So, Any other thoughts for Rich, guys? No, I don't really run into that problem, but I always catch it ahead of time too. Like I, whenever they ask about my team, I just, I only work, I only hire people that I would trust to work in my house when I'm not there. I, I got guns and cash in my house and I trust my guys. And then of course, adding the police officer thing on top of it, I can do background checks that are more serious than what you guys can do. <laughs> yeah, the card we can't pull. Yeah. yeah, you guys can't pull that card. So I don't want to use that one, but just saying, Hey, I trust these guys work in my house when my wife is home because they do. I have no problem. And I've yet to have an issue with it. Rich, I don't think you'll have an issue going forward. That, that was the other thing. I She was excited, the lady was, that you know, my helper and on <clears throat> seven o'clock at night, I get a text message. We prefer you to work single. And I was like, her solo. And I said, I, okay. And then I put it off, which I shouldn't have sent back some, mm. not really nasty text, but it was not right. <laughs> so, yeah, I have to cut my ties. I will, but. You don't through. have to cut him. You can let her make the decision. That's the way yeah. it's going to be. Yeah, you yeah. set the boundary. It's your company, not hers. Yeah. I uh, already let her know. That's the way it's going to be. I'm going to have Rich is an awesome name, but we want to be richer. Yep. So okay. I, don't, I can't waste awesome. my time there. That's very true. Yeah, we need to build this business. Yeah. And generate more referrals from three Ps. And we want referrals from people who are going to refer us and say, hey, this whole team's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I want to encourage you to get to a point to where you're hiring people who are better than you. So that when you're selling, you could say, and not only are they trustworthy, but these craftsmen are actually better than I am. That's. And when that's, it's true, you can sell the fire out of them. Yeah. When you hire a craftsman. And, and I remember sometimes I show up to jobs like, what are you doing here, Steve? These guys got it. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, see you later. <laughs> I'm going to go back to Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Unless you want to stay in the pub, which is awesome too. Craig, you're up, buddy. Already gotten so much from, from the conversation. Okay, meeting yeah. adjourned. <laughs> Just what I'm dealing with, other than a cat keeping walking in front of me. I is... get a screenshot. That was awesome. I could only see your eyes <laughs> for a second. Uh, with the tail. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, I'm still scrambling a little bit for, for jobs for my guys. Things mm -hmm. uh, like estimates are starting to trickle in a little bit more. And I know that as the fullness of April comes that it'll just get really crazy. It's just a little bit of a lull before the storm, but yeah. So courtesy canvassing is certainly going to be on the schedule for today. I've got one crew working on one job today. So they were working yesterday and today and the rest of the week is pretty sparse. So I've, yeah, so I'll have to do some courtesy canvassing today. I've reached out to to my previous clients, open estimates, so on and so forth. So yeah, I'm just all okay. ears to, to how to stick in some work for the rest of the week. Yeah. I think you answered a couple things question. first. Yeah. A uh, couple things, just some extra uh, accountability. Chime in at the end of the day today in our mastermind chat of the time, how long your courtesy canvassing and how mm -hmm. many doors you knocked on and how mm -hmm. many conversations you had. Okay. That's good. Okay. How much time, how many doors, and how many conversations? All right. Then the other thing is step nine, the system. Remember step nine? You've got the system up right over your desk, right? Of course you do. Step nine, stay in top of mind. So you've already reached out to all your open estimates, but are you calling two customers a day just to say hi? How are you doing? It's not a sales call. Yep. You're just calling to say hi to connect mm -hmm. because it's about relationships, right? And then I assume you have a monthly newsletter going out consistently. And then you've got your send out cards. I believe you're pretty strong in your send out cards. Yeah. I just had a send out card for week day and newsletters are like once every two, three months. I could be a little bit more frequent with the email newsletters. Okay. These are critical, very important, very important, just like the rest of these steps. So if you're not able to stay on top of them, hire April's team to do it or somebody else. I think April's like 99 a month mm -hmm. and they send out these beautiful email newsletter and it's just done. And this, if we stay top of mind, it pays for itself. So it's not an expense, right? Unless you can get yourself to do it. And ideally it's not the best use of our time to be doing them ourselves anyway. Mm. So either April's team or somebody else hire it out to keep those consistent, okay? 
But the one thing you shouldn't delegate are the phone calls, two phone calls a day. Okay. And while you're driving, you just call, right? You say, hey, Rich, Craig, how you doing? But you connect on a, a personal basis. How's, how's that pesky dog, neighbor's dog, right? Or how's that golf swing? Whatever points of rapport that were there, just drop back to them. If there was something funny, there's usually something funny or humorous. For me, it was like, hey, that gator, go back into the neighbor's pool. Just some, ha, ha, ha. We, we, we don't have whatever. no gators up here. <laughs> yeah. It's more like raccoons. Yet. Okay. <laughs> Maybe so, bears. Yeah, bears. <laughs> hey, that bear come knocking on your front door again? <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of bears here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, bears there. Maybe elk. I don't know. But the, the idea is trying to get creative and, and yeah. draw back to a point of rapport. We'll call two of them a day, outsource that newsletter to keep it consistent, and make sure your send out cards are uh, every, minimum every quarter. Newsletter is a minimum once a month and two phone calls a day. And use a habit tracker for the phone calls to help get you and keep you in that habit as you're establishing a new habit as well. And may I have one more question? This might be a can of worms. So if there's no time for it, uh, we can do it next time. Well, but I think it'll be okay. Let's hit it. Okay. So a friend of mine has a painting business or had a painting business mm -hmm. in the city. And he has since retired from painting. So he's okay. interested in selling off his client list. He has mm -hmm. not been... He's an honest guy. He says he's not been very good at keeping in mm -hmm. touch with his clients. So in actual mm -hmm. fact, probably over the last couple of years, so he, like anything over a couple of years old would be like spamming people because they'd have no recognition of him. So he's probably mm -hmm. only got a client list of maybe 40 people type thing. Mm -hmm. So we were just either thinking about him selling that to me outright or doing like a referral fee for anybody off that client list that that comes yeah. to me. Okay. I'm really glad you brought this to us. Do not buy the list. It's not worth very much. And if you work something out, go with the referral fee. Yeah. I was thinking like 5% for the first job. And then after that, it's mine. Yeah. And, that sounds fair. And he would do like an introductory email for me. Of Because now he has is... ownership. Yeah. In it, right? Yeah. He would do an introductory email saying, I'm getting out of the, I've gotten out of the painting business. This is a good friend of mine who does really good work. You can trust him, sing my praises, whatever. If you have any painting needs, he's your guy. He'll be reaching out to you every once in a while with an email just to keep you updated on things. If you don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want to, you don't want to be subscribed, just unsubscribe. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And especially go the referral because he has ownership in it. If you just buy the list, like he has no interest in aside from being a good guy, I want to help you out. But if there's 5% in it for everyone that he's able to help you to get, he's a little more incentivized. Just yeah. Cause then if somebody calls stay. him, he's yeah, go, go to Craig, right? Like rather than somebody mm -hmm. else. Cause from me, he'll get 5% and. Yeah, yeah, big enough most... job. I'll come pick you up and deliver you, drive you over there and introduce him to you personally, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because, yeah, like other guys, he's not going to get anything from, right? Or mm -hmm. they might lie to him and not give him the full 5%. There's all sorts of yeah. stuff. So there was, way back in the day, there was a company, they got a divorce and he moved to Indiana and his wife, his ex-wife said, hey, do you want to buy his list? Or And so I thought about it and I looked at it. And she said, and, and, and after I thought and prayed on it, I realized no, because it's not the same customer base. Mm. He was always lowballing everybody. And it turned out that later on, he like let everything go. And I was able to capture the phone number for free just because he let it go like months later, a year later, whatever. And nothing like the phone was so next to silent. The phone number wasn't worth anything either. And I'm so grateful that I didn't pay for any of that, because that would have been a big mistake. So mm -hmm. do, yeah, share that to say, don't pay for it. Don't buy it. There's nothing there. If now I'm not saying don't ever buy a business, right? There's certainly businesses of value. We sold our business because I had tremendous value, but this one here, no, he, especially being he hasn't stayed top of mind and he's done. Yeah. Yeah. But he does like, I've went painters to him. He's does good mm -hmm. work. I, I know that, yeah, it'd be good to 
be able to get some of this business. So yeah, I think the referral fee is the way to go. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, so similar we... market, similar service. Yeah. Should it does five percent like per job? Does that sound like sound like something reasonable? I think ten is high, especially on the bigger jobs. That might well, it the size doesn't really matter because it comes down to the net profit percent, right? So see, you know, negotiate with him. Tell him five. He's probably he he's gonna probably feel like that's way too small. Mm. Um, if you don't know net profit, it's usually ten percent. So the question would be, is it worth giving up ten percent or most of the net profit to acquire the customer? Now, something to consider is that is it's not about the job. Okay, that's the short game. That's nearsightedness. Mm -hmm. It's about the customer and the referral network of that customer. We're playing the long game, right? The repeat mm -hmm. business and referrals from that customer. As long as we stay top of mind on a regular basis through all these medias we just talked about, then those referrals, you know, continue for years on end, which branch into more referrals. So it's about the referral network of the customer. So some it might be worth giving up 10%, which is most of the net profit or majority of the net profit. Right. But don't start there. Start at five and see how the negotiations go. Cool. Sounds, uh, yeah. sounds good. Okay. Right on. Thanks. Hey, Seuss. You're welcome. Hey, Steve. Yes, guys. So I just want to witness to Steve was mentioning earlier about door knocking out of suddenly you would get calls and people would start saying, I'll go with you. So yes, that happened to me too. And it's strange. Now that I wild, <laughs> now that I stop and slow down on door knocking, I only do it maybe once a month now for 30 minutes, which is horrible. I told myself, <laughs> I, I told Steve as well too in October or November, Steve, no matter how busy I get, I'll continue doing door knocking. And I feel like I'm not holding on to my word as I told Steve there. So now what's happening, guys, is um, I'm pretty embarrassed about this. I am not happy with it neither, is that my close ratio is at 32, 33. Around February, yeah, February, around that month, February, March, yeah, February, March. There was about 55 to 49, 48. So I noticed that's dropping and... The comments that I got recently last month from two people were one, one lady told me you're too professional laughing. Another lady, older lady, it was two of them, but the older lady was just sitting there. She's pretty old. And before I left, he, she said, you're pretty ambitious. So I don't know if that's compliments on the, of the <laughs> reason why I have 35% ratio. Maybe I'm going too hard at it. Or maybe I'm acting too much of a car salesman. I don't know. I just don't like that 30% ratio. I want it above Good. at 55. Yeah. And then thanks to mm -hmm. you bringing up, Steve, I know I'm going to go back out there because it's an eye opener. That is true. What you were saying. Isn't that cool? Right on. Yeah. Okay. Coaching time. How often are you going to go out for how long? How many doors are you going to knock on? I told myself 30 minutes one time a month. So now 30 minutes, three times a week. Is that enough? That's a good start. Yeah. Okay. I was start. doing like three hours. How about, yeah, when he first started, it was three hours. I yeah. That. A day, every day. Wasn't it just about every day at first? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But now you're not scared to knock on doors, are you, anymore? There's They're like, accusing you of being ambitious? Yeah. That's a pretty cool compliment. Now, what I would have asked her is, how do you mean? Yeah, I was right, so we can give that. we can we can give it meanings, but I would ask her, how does she mean by that? So next time I hear that, okay, that's interesting. How do you mean? Just to have her clarify, like, what does that mean to you? I'd, I'd be curious. Now, the one that said you're too professional, that's great feedback. That means that she wasn't your three P's and she's looking for a handyman to do some cleanup work or whatever. Yeah, when she said that, I thought maybe I should come dressed up with a shirt full of paint and pants full of paint. Like I, <laughs> she, she burst out laughing <laughs> yeah she did because i asked yeah, yeah. professional questions and she laughed like you're too professional like what <laughs> that's a compliment good job that is yes yeah well done well done because yeah. uh, that's what the right customers want to hear it's just so, my first time uh, hearing it, Steve. So I just thought I should lower my standards or, or was it really too high? and now you're clarifying that so i appreciate it Absolutely. No, she's just, she, she lets you know that she's not your 3P <laughs> and that's awesome. 
So yeah, way to go. All right, we're going to get back out there, courtesy canvassing, and let us know when that phone just happens to ring. Yep. <laughs> okay. okay. Three times a week for a half hour. And I would encourage you to go for an hour. Let's step it up to an hour. How about an hour? One hour, three times a week? Okay. Unless three. You want to go three hours? <laughs> no, I don't. I cannot stand so Okay. <laughs> just, just one hour? It's hard yeah, work, but it, man, it builds character. And it does. Things. It really does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it develops your resolve. I can do anything. Are you going to stick your dog on me? So what? Look at all these bite marks. <laughs> it's an HOA you're not allowed to what do you do send me a letter I don't live here <laughs> you call the police are they going to haul me away to HOA jail for knocking on your door <laughs> I'm half kidding right we don't want to go and break all the laws but the idea is to develop grid and, and resolve and man, it's one of the best things it's what I had Sam doing I don't know you guys might remember those videos back in Venice he started the uh, weed killing business and he would go door to door for an hour and a half two hours and in the afternoons and evenings in Florida knock on doors and he's real shy. He's, I should say, shouldn't say shy. He's a very reserved and he would go for an hour and a half here. No, after no, but then he'd make a sale and then he'd go no and no, then he'd make a sale. And then somebody even come out and shake his hand and take a picture with him and send it to their grandkids and say, why aren't you doing this? You know, <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple of those, right. Or send to their son, like you should get a grandson doing this, but he developed that resolve. And now today I said, Sam, go knock on the store, make this phone call. And I just say, okay. Cause he knows what's the worst thing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But it develops that grit, that resolve. It's awesome. So way to go, Jesus. All right. And then I'll share with you. So anytime you guys need your team to do something that they don't want to do or they feel like it's too hard, all you have to do is just raise the pain. So to get you to go to an hour, I, I joked around about three hours. You felt the pain of three hours a day so that now an hour a day doesn't feel so bad. Yeah, I still feel it. but No, you feel it, but not as bad as three hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you're out there to say, Hey, at least it's not three hours a day. Let's get it. And you put yeah. in a Zig Ziglar, it'll feel like 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sounds yeah. And you'll be hip and scoppity everywhere. Mm -hmm. Florian, you're up. Okay. So a lot of referral lady from uh, France and BNI. The question is how I can follow up because I made the phone calls, email, text like two, three times. Mm -hmm. and no one answer so i have one lady we talked about steve last week this lady is i offer her she wants to do some plastic jobs i offer her a plastic job i sent her a text call her yesterday and there's no answering it's like how i can follow up this is another way other than phone call email and text because there's no one responding like i send even calendly so they can book me send me through the website, schedule me, all the kind of things. So I did whatever I had in my hands in order to get those clients. And and I hate it on the people that don't answer me at least. Just say to me something like, hey, something, I have another painter, I have not doing this time. But when they don't answer, that's what they, excuse me saying that, but I hate it. Like, I don't like it at all. What do you think, guys? When you're at the estimate, always schedule the follow-up phone call. So you're yes. never interrupting anybody. Schedule the follow-up phone call. That's really the key to effortless and following up. Yeah. And what's weird oh, is that right. she was the first one when I asked to schedule it a certain day. She was the oh, first right. one to say, well, I need more time to, to get more estimates. So probably not. And so I just did anyways. But <laughs> every time I call or send a text or email and I say to them mm -hmm. the same day, I am going to follow up by the end of the week. So they yeah. know they are, they know they're going to call them. But mm -hmm. still, they are not responding. I would um, redirect those efforts to new leads, new opportunities. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Right. You're welcome. All right, gentlemen, let's roll out with takeaways. Isaac, lead the way. Feelings are action indicators. Newsletter, two phone calls a day, habit tracker, courtesy canvassing. Awesome sauce. Thank you. Yeah. Rich? Really like Daryl's timeout. Or time audit yeah mm -hmm. that that's huge um and stay on task it's like and uh, call two a day i right? like the quick side on that here in tennessee it's interesting everybody uh loves to visit when somebody came over there here for three hours whoa okay that's cool i was on the phone with somebody who was calling about my jeep i put my red jeep up for sale and after 29 minutes he says i hate to cut this short 
you won't you, you probably shouldn't wouldn't have that problem when you call them but that's cool call them connect with them that's so good glad to hear that rich when mm -hmm. you're here in the south or the real south florida's not the south that's as soon as you get down below orlando you're back up north because everybody's from up north down there but when you're in the real south it you better schedule a half hour for those phone calls all right <laughs> craig takeaways there were many but i think the biggest one is the courtesy canvassing so i'll get on that today <clears throat> Awesome. Yeah. And then please show us at the end of the day, right? How long, how many doors and how many conversations in the uh, mastermind chat? Jesus? Yeah. So mine has to be just tracking the conversations I have up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Keep that ambition. Keep that professionalism. Just put it in the right neighborhoods. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go, buddy. Florian. Yeah, like what Daryl said, you to track your time during the day because you waste 15 minutes, 30 minutes there, whatever it is. So it's better to write down everything, which I do actually mm -hmm. in the focus planner. Three Ps, people, process, and profits. So keep it in my mind all the time. Habit tracker, courtesy canvas, of course, daily rules, and then looking for the new client. I did what I did in my ability for those clients. So I have to look for new ones and let them go somehow. Mm -hmm. Daryl, a uh, quick question. What is the name going to be the name of your new time management book? I don't know. <laughs> Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. <laughs> Get it done. Yeah, get it done. I'm in Oklahoma. It's heard it done. Get her done. <laughs> her done. <laughs> All right, takeaways, Daryl? Being top of mind, even when you're really busy and, and booked out, don't really need jobs. That, that need will come in three months and you didn't stay top of mind three months ago. And so I'm going to, I'm going to stay top of mind better, even in my busy season. Yes, sir. Fantastic. All right. You guys, another awesome mastermind. I appreciate you guys. I want to encourage you to continue to do what it says right behind Daryl and Jesus and the rest of you off to the sides there on the wall. Dream big, hustle smarter. You've got this. You got this. Yeah. Good, yeah, day, guys. good luck. Have a good day, guys. Good day.